తిన్నావా ఏమన్నా బ్రేక్ఫాస్ట్ దోశ ఏ చట్నీ ఇష్టము పల్లి విత్ సో మచ్ ఇంట్రెస్ట్ లైక్ విచ్ మూవీ డి వాచ్ అనేది So, welcome to another Flint Story podcast. Uh, Today we have with us Kishore Krishnamurthy, a photographer and a publisher. Hi, Kishore. Hi, Kishore. Hi, hi. So, How's it going? <laughs> Naku, first time I met you was back in 2018. So, I, Yashwant, my friend, uh, we came to your studio. And uh, basically, your team uh, did the photography for his brother's wedding. And then, like, just to collect some stuff, we came to your studio in Marit Palli. and uh, you took us through your studio and then uh, concord magazines apre you started publishing them and you gave us four four issues each and then also i think your wife was doing some work with block printing okay. magam work uh, block print block print block printing then block prints yeah and adi kuda chupichunde naaku so naaku ekkuva ante even my brother my brother is also a photographer like he's been doing it for the last 10 years kan naaku photography మీది ఎక్కడ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ అనిపించింది అంటే విత్ ద మ్యాగ్జీన్ వేర్ అండ్ యూ టుక్ అ థీమ్ అండ్ యూ క్రియేటెడ్ అ మ్యాగ్జీన్ ఆన్ ఆన్ డిఫరెంట్ డిఫరెంట్ థీమ్స్ సో నాకు ఫోటోగ్రఫీని అలా ప్రజెంట్ చేయడం ఇన్ అ మ్యాగ్జీన్ వే నాకు చాలా ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ అనిపించింది లైక్ ఐ నెవర్ సో దట్ బిఫోర్ లేటర్ ఆన్ ఐ డిట్ సి లైక్ యు నో వెన్ ఎవర్ ఈవెన్ ఐ గో టు బుక్ స్టోర్స్ ఐ సి వాట్ ఫోటో మ్యాగ్జీన్స్ ఆర్ దేర్ బట్ హైదరాబాద్లో లైక్ ఎస్పెషలీ విత్ ద థీమ్స్ దట్ యూ పిక్ అబ్యాండెడ్ కానీ బైసికల్ కానీ ఐ ఫౌండ్ దెమ్ టు బి వెరీ ఇంట్రెస్టింగ్ ఎస్పెషలీ ద బార్స్ వన్ సో అప్పటి నుంచి ఐ బీన్ ఫాలోయింగ్ యూర్ వర్క్ అండ్ ట్వంటీ ట్వంటీలో ఐ సా లాడ్ ఆఫ్ యువర్ లైఫ్ సెషన్స్ దట్ యూ డెడ్ ఆన్ ఇన్స్టాగ్రామ్ అండ్ వెన్ వీ థాట్ అబౌట్ డూయింగ్ అ పాడ్కాస్ట్ చాలా ఇనీషియల్ డేస్లోనే నేను అనుకున్నాను దాట్ ఇఫ్ ఎవర్ డూయింగ్ అ పాడ్కాస్ట్ విత్ అ ఫోటోగ్రఫర్ ఐ వుడ్ వాంట్ ఇస్ స్టార్టెడ్ ఆఫ్ విత్ యూ అని చెప్పి సో దట్స్ హౌ ఇట్ హ్యాపెండ్ సో వైల్ వీ వర్ డూయింగ్ ఆర్ రీసెర్చ్ i mean nakid mundu kuda telusu that you did your schooling in hps and jp so i wanted to understand how did hps as a school help you i mean how did it shape you into the person who you are today hmm. i want to start with that sure um so i think it's hard to really pinpoint one fact of hps hmm. has hmm. made me who i am but i think it's more of the ecosystem of the hyderabad public school where in a the campus is a huge part of the life in school because you're not in a vertical apartment kind of building you're right. a large almost 100 acre campus with a lot of space to go around i think that initial mindset of freedom comes from day one when you're in school uh, both from the students and the faculty as well so Agreed. you are kind of uh-huh. encouraged to do a lot of extracurricular activities um apart from that i think at least when i was in school this is a long time ago um you know there's no kind of i think teachers were much more encouraging in what it was not like you must study and get marks that was not the objective mm. it was about how mm. you improve as a human being mm. right. which i think mm. is the main objective of education of course oh, indian okay. education has its own pros and cons oh, where okay. you made to study a lot and not necessarily uh, you know improve yourself as a person oh, no. i think hps was an exception that oh, were at least at that time where at that time yeah. at that oh, time where true it was not just about uh, getting more marks or just achieving academic, academic excellence right. it was also about improving your overall personality as a human being and a person mm. so i think that's generally the uh, way hps worked and i think it still works that way in a certain way mm. um i think that's what really gave you the platform to think above and beyond a traditional uh approach to life or a career right mm-hmm. so it's not like oh you have to be an engineer or doctor kind of thing which is mm-hmm. the prevalent mm-hmm. choice of careers at that point of time right mm. so like so. you you were born here and ikkade puttara le pote like ante mm-hmm. he, before hps okay yeah so you have so. to go back 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 so uh-huh. i was i was born in tamil nadu okay. we lived there for a very short amount of time about 3 years of my life then we moved to indonesia which is where i started my education okay. so oh. as 3 to 8 years old we were in indonesia because dad had a job there okay right so then after that we moved to hyderabad oh. okay so i joined it was in fourth class from fourth to 12000 hps okay before that i was in in a international school in indonesia it was called nehru memorial international school oh. so it was run by indians okay but we had a lot of uh, diverse population you know you had koreans you had in singapore and people from all all the expats got it you used to go to that school over there basically got it got it um, interesting so that's where schooling started but obviously then i came to hps and mm-hmm. got picked it. up from there so so yeah. like you said you know hps as a school like they just don't focus on the regular subjects but they also focus on literature cultural activities sports and all of that so were you into any of these things like when you were in hps you were you a shy kid 
Uh, see, I was I was a very studious kid, so oh, okay. I was always a front bencher. Also, first of all, okay. see, I was very short, so okay. by default in schools, you know, they put you by height wise. Oh no! So right. I inevitably, I'm sitting in the front, uh, so I have to pay attention. Like uh, you can't <laughs> not off. But uh, also, I was quite interested in academics. Also, I mean, a grader, very. I'm going to say, like, put you very always getting you studious and a grades. Are they? Ah, and then I'm going to put a seeing a D grades. No studious card. Studious card. Who? Can you studious? Undak pena konto mandi a grades etch konto. Aim jadwaru can you? Ah, a grade etch. Oh, that's the guys who say they don't study, but they do study at home. Okay, those are liars. Right. So, so man, I mean, I think I always was quite interested in studies as well. So I think also the other part, like I said, is. I am fortunate to have had teachers who made subjects interesting for us because mm. I think that's very important oh, about studying true. is that if you just told this is a subject read the textbook and write the year of the battle of panipat or whatever that's pointless right you just no. don't have any oh. I've never used the battle of panipat year any time on part of my life <laughs> apart from school oh. but there is a teacher that has to make subjects interesting yes we had some uh, teachers who were quite boring as well but we had some teachers who were very excellent who kind of really motivated you to study about things you were kind of excited to study english oh. right study oh, right. economics um okay. so that's a good oh, no, it depends ma good oka teacher unde like uh, the way she explained uh, sherlock holmes a non detail premila ma'am okay oka oka class untadu i'm explain chestunde okay you know the way she tells the story gaani you know you will be engrossed asal oh yeah. crazy undi kada ani appudu automatically interest vastadi dan meeda yeah totally because agree. the passion of the teacher has to come out because oh, no. there are teachers who are just there for the sake of teaching yes. oh, no. oh, there are no. teachers who also are it because they want to teach the oh, next no. generation right oh, no. which is a huge difference in the way they even approach the subject oh, no no uh, like uh, there are few teachers who understand few students and they like itanu you know he is not he is this kind of a student and they kuddiga tailor made just sir there was a sir mak telugu sir so he knew that le vid kuddiya ventane ekkadu nemmadiga cheppali so parent teacher meeting lo kuda galisinappudu ma mom ki aina వాడు కొద్దిగా మెల్ల నేర్చుకుంటాడు కానీ నేర్చుకోగలుగుతాడు నాతో ఎవరంత సాఫ్ట్ లేక్ కానీ అలాంటి టీచర్స్ ఉండడం వల్లనే అట్లీస్ట్ యూనో కానీ ఎందుకంటే బికాస్ దేవర్ ఆల్సో టీచర్స్ సేయింగ్ దట్ నాలా యాక్ ఫీడు అని సో అది ఈవెన్ దో అది యునో డైరెక్ట్లీ ఇంపాక్ట్ లేక్ అంటే నేను పట్టించుకోలే ఎప్పుడు నాకు అసలు తెలియదు పట్టించుకోవాలని తెలియదు పట్టించుకుంటే చదువుతుండే అదే అంటున్నా కానీ సబ్కాన్షియస్లీ దట్ వుడ్ హ్యావ్ ఎన్ ఎఫెక్ట్ yeah because i knew it was having an effect later on subconsciously because when uh, so and so sir told me that ledu we chegal thadu ani that it gave me a boost telikundane yeah 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 so they there so very important to have teachers who you know understand individually students and at least the yeah. effort True. and thought better they will have a lot yeah. of different and that gives you confidence exactly like, basically right no, so, no. Yeah. So, but so i mean i think to come back to your actual question i did, i did uh i didn't have an interest in music and art when i was in school right. as well so i was part of the band for i should play drums so oh, i was okay <laughs> nice. yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah you yeah. still play no not really i mean i can probably play if you give me a set but i haven't played in ages mm-hmm. but yeah uh, when was the last time you played oh, you know 10 years ago cheesy ga <laughs> but how i mean don't you feel like going back like is it not that addictive because i i recently started learning mm-hmm. and i think like there is no chance that i'm leaving drums in my life <laughs> i mean but i think see it's about priorities when you grow up no you have 24 hours in a day i'm like i could play drums or i could take photos that's kind of mm-hmm. and right. become adult and responsibilities come it's very difficult to adulting yes i would love to so many things because when i was a kid i used to paint i'd love to paint i'd love to mm-hmm. play drums mm-hmm. i i used to go to carnatic music classes when i was a kid oh. so there's a lot of interest you have time for in a kid i used to go to swimming classes and all this mm-hmm. stuff i used to play tennis mm-hmm. I should play football now. Right. Yeah, that's <laughs> one of these things now, Gautam. <laughs> oh, crazy. So, and I think the school is also part of it because school had such extensive oh, no, exactly. places you could do a lot of sports. No, no, no. no. I think for but majority of the school, I did like only football, the easy sports. Right. The last two years, a friend of mine and I realized we're going to leave this school. We're going to go somewhere else. We'll never have this. So, let us play every right. sport in oh, school. Sure. So, 11th and 12th, we did everything. I played Kabaddi, I did cross country, oh. I did running. I'm like, okay, just do it. What is there? Like, you know, right. so nice. Um, that was more of a, an experimentation phase to try everything as much mm, as possible because right. I, I don't think I would have ever played Kabaddi after that and I have not played Kabaddi after that. Mm. But that was an opportunity to do it. So, right, right. Okay. Right. Hmm. So, I have a question. So, at some point of time in your life, you did experiment mm. with camera and your mm. fascination with yeah. photography grew there. So, photography pick up chase in the rota then i think you start looking at art from a completely different perspective mm. like be it uh, 
పెయింటింగ్స్ కానీ ఆర్ లైక్ లెట్స్ ఇఫ్ సమన్ ఇస్ ప్లేయింగ్ అన్ ఇన్స్ట్రుమెంట్ యూ వాంట్ క్యాప్చర్ మూమెంట్ అండ్ ఆల్ ఆఫ్ దాట్ సో ఐ వాంటెడ్ టు అండర్స్టాండ్ దట్ దాట్ ఎక్స్ అంటే డిడ్ యూ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ సంథింగ్ విత్ యూ నో మ్యూజిక్ ఆర్ డాన్స్ ఆర్ సంథింగ్ అండ్ ఫ్రమ్ దేట్ డిడ్ యూ కమ్ టు ఫోటోగ్రఫీ బికాస్ ఆబ్వియస్లీ నౌ యూఆర్ ఎక్స్ప్లోరింగ్ అ లాడ్ ఆఫ్ స్టఫ్ బికాస్ ఆఫ్ ఫోటోగ్రఫీ సో సో దిస్ హ్యాపన్ ఫస్ట్ ఇస్ మై అండర్స్టాండింగ్ ఫ్రమ్ వాట్ యూర్ టెలింగ్ సో ఐ సూ టేక్ ఫోటోస్ ఇన్ స్కూల్ సో ఐ వాజ్ ఎడిట్ ఆఫ్ ద స్కూల్ న్యూస్ లెటర్ ఫైనల్ ఇయర్ విచ్ గేవ్ మీ అన్ ఆపర్చునిటీ టు టేక్ ఫోటోగ్రాఫ్స్ ఫర్ లాడ్ ఆఫ్ థింగ్స్ ఇన్ స్కూల్ Okay. So obviously this is a 2006 when you didn't have we had a small digital camera mm-hmm. whatever but I used to use that to shoot things and events things in school for was the that a film camera no, this is a digital camera okay mm-hmm. you, you, I had a Sony T33 which was this credit card size cameras that used to get that uh-huh. time right right uh, my dad got one from abroad so you should fit in your like school right. pocket nicely just put uh-huh. in the pocket you go around and take photos so, uh-huh. so you nice. didn't start uh, with film cameras like your photography no, no 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 i'm not that old i don't know how old you think i'm not that old i'm just adde konda mandi like you know they uh, like even after they even if they've started yeah. with uh, digital i think yeah. they still go back to the rangers and all of that so see i mean i i did like take film photos as a kid because that's the camera we had when i was like what some 7 mm-hmm. 8 years old but apart right. from that it's a right. my actual uh journey into photography world started with the sony t33 t- uh, t- camera mm-hmm. which was mm-hmm. i mean it just was handy for me at that point of time it worked and Got did it. the job yeah. and i was right. able to capture things for mm-hmm. the mm-hmm. right so at what point of time in your life you decided that you know because you said you were a studious mm. uh mm. when as a kid mm. so okay regular mainstream job ka do mm. photography mm. can be my mm. thing mm. from which i can actually make revenue or mm. money or whatever mm. Mm. so how did that transition happen and how did you take that call and also ante 12th ayindi 12th ana tarata what was going through your head ante enti kya hai scene ab అని ఇట్లా ఆలోచిస్తున్నారా లేకపోతే ఇంట్లో ఇది చేసే అన్నారా లేకపోతే సో ఐ మీన్ ఐ సెట్ ఐ సెట్ ఇకనామిక్స్ ఎస్ అప్షనల్ ఫర్ నైన్త్ అండ్ టెన్త్ సో లెవెన్త్ ట్వెల్త్ ఆల్సో ఐ టుక్ ఎంఈసి మ్యాథ్స్ ఇకనామిక్స్ అండ్ కామర్స్ ఎస్ మై స్ట్రీమ్ రైట్ బికా ఐ లైక్ డీన్ మార్క్స్ బికా మై టీచర్ ఆఫ్ ఇకనామిక్స్ వాస్ రియలీ నైస్ సో షీ టాట్ మీ ఇకనామిక్స్ ఫర్ ఫోర్ ఇయర్స్ సో ఆఫ్టర్ మై డాడ్ లైక్ వాట్ యూ వాంట్ స్టడీ ఐ మీన్ ఐ సెట్ ఐ లైక్ ఇకనామిక్స్ he said okay fine we'll study economics only so my dad is quite flexible that way mm, he's not right, like he's going to say so that's why i studied economics and politics in uk oh, okay. okay so i went uh, to the university of essex and did an undergrad uh, in economics and politics so i was kind oh, of okay. quite an organic growth it didn't feel mm-hmm. unusual mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i also didn't really think photography was a viable career option this is in mm-hmm. 2006 7 where it suddenly thought right. of as a right. thing right. so that's what happened yeah. of course and when i went to university i continued photography so i had a D- i bought a dslr that time mm. i had a canon 40d so i used to shoot for the um, students union for the university I had a part time job as a photographer mm. i became the president of the photo society over there oh. so a lot of photography related things happened but it's all happening parallel to academics right. so basically whatever i used to earn with my um photography part time job i used to reinvest into buying new equipment buying mm. flash and just mm. improve myself but I never thought of it again this is 8 9 10 where you know it's still thinking okay, this is uh-huh. fun this is good uh-huh. right but most of my friends who are studying economics and politics would go into a finance role or a consultancy role mm. which is kind of what your degree would suggest you uh-huh. and were you inclined to do the same thing like yeah, more or you, less right yeah yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. so i think once i uh, finished my degree so also i got into student politics when i was there as well so i became the president of the students union in the university so there right. in the uk it's a full time job so this is oh. an independent organization where you're paid to work for a year after you finish your degree okay so you finish your degree for 3 years and then you work as a president and then you move on in oh. life are okay. you like you saying student union right. like what kind of activities or uh, issues so, yeah, so it's quite diff- so there i mean i think um basically the university is only concerned about academic part of life on campus right mm. mm-hmm. and everything non academic is done by the students union acha so okay. it's your sports clubs it's your societies they run the restaurants on campus we used to have two bars and three night clubs on campus is all owned by the students union mm. right and the students union had a full time employee about 40 people okay oh. so there's a ceo there's a cfo and all of these things mm. so every year a president comes so we have president four vice presidents so we come and kind of basically tell them what the students want for that right yeah because mm-hmm. the ceo is in his 50s but right. we are all in our 20s so we're kind of showing them what the latest things that students mm-hmm. want are so mm-hmm. we obviously change every year mm. uh but we are a full time uh staff employed by them to uh, nice. lead the direction of the students union to ensuring that they're going the right direction to keep up with students how was that experience because you're talking about curating experiences and you know uh regular 
ఐ మీన్ లోకలీ లైక్ ఆ ప్లేస్ లో చూసే లోకల్ షోస్ ఆర్ గిగ్స్ కాకుండా యూ గెస్ మస్ట్ హవ్ సీన్ దట్ యూ నో సంథింగ్ ఇస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ ఓవర్ దేర్ లైక్ ఇన్ ది యుఎస్ ఆర్ సంథింగ్ ఇస్ హ్యాపనింగ్ ఇన్ ఇండియా ప్రాబ్లీ దిస్ ఇస్ సంథింగ్ దట్ వీ కెన్ ట్రై ఇన్ అ క్యాంపస్ సో దట్ దట్ హ్యాపన్స్ లైక్ ఇన్ ద స్టూడెంట్ బాడీ ఐ బిలీవ్ లైక్ వెర్ ఇన్ యూ వాంట్ షో కేస్ న్యూ థింగ్స్ యా విత్ ఇన్ ద క్యాంపస్ So how was that experience like overall? Because you were the... So I think person. we were uh, aware that we are quite a... And the world is growing to a more global space that time. So it's not right. like it was all very UK based experiences. Exactly. So we used to have like the value on campus. We had Holi on... I know it's much bigger now on campus no. than it was when I was there. Because no. that time, the population of the international students also very small. No. No. Hmm. There were a handful of Indian students that time. It was majority like I... So when my, my first year, we were in a flat. So you have a tower campus you have a tower accommodation so uh, each floor is one flat mm. and you have 16 bedrooms so 16 people okay so in the 16 people i was the only indian and the 50 all white oh. people okay uh, but that was great for me because i was able to really mix and tackle my dad told me very clearly if you're going 5000 miles away go you there and have meet indian people i'll hit you on exactly. the head exactly yeah. yeah. go and no 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 totally agree. don't go and have curd rice and papadam only akkad boy malli veelamaale em chustam yeah so i mean that was very good for me so i was able to completely integrate into society over there in fact like all the people who voted for me were all white people there that was mm, because right. i was able to you know assimilate into society and not say that oh this is not my thing right so you know it's about right. cuisine it's about everything right you have to get into the culture of them so mm-hmm. uh, that was a big takeaway for me as well even when i come back to right. india today oh, no. i think the working culture there is far superior in terms of small like turning up on time and oh. like you know doing what you say you'll do mm. which especially in hyderabad is very different yeah, right, right. different if it was like ha ho jata sab ho jata it's like it won't happen i know oh, it won't no. happen but uh, so i thought yes. that part has come to me as a part of my uh, professionalism and work which i take everywhere with me as well right right uh, i think we've digressed significantly what you said yeah, yeah, but, yeah, but yeah. it still makes sense yeah but uh, so then you came back to hyderabad and you took up photography as full no, time no, or so got more to <laughs> so after i i after my year as a president i um, um i got a job as a oil trader in london okay so again my degree is economics and politics so you kind of go into the financial right. sector right. Mm-hmm. so i was studying um, wti crude oil uh, market so it's an american west texas intermediate is a kind of oil so okay is for this company called schneider trading so i did that for about a year i think um, so i think the first 6 months is quite exciting anything new you do it's like a honeymoon right. phase right right you're given three monitors you feel like you've made it in life and you're been you know on the trading floor and yes. you're like oh my god this is like yeah. wow how cool is this right um but then i i realized very quickly that there was two things about that i didn't like one thing was that it's a very anti social job like yes you do have your floor mates hmm. and maybe your manager hmm. but you don't really interact with many people on a daily basis right. and i'm a fairly social person inherently mm-hmm. i know that i am that mm-hmm. we're sitting around da 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 i'm like uh-huh. okay fine and then you know you just talk to people in lunch and obviously you go for drinks or whatever in the evening but beyond that it's a okay. the, the, it's the a repeat yeah the nature of the job is not that way mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right you have to be involved in the screen in the news oh. and that too after being the student president yeah <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah right so that's kind of um that was one part of it i think other part of it also i think for me um i felt in in the role of a trader uh, i don't know how to but it's like you're making money to make money for mm-hmm. example today like you you know you buy a bottle of water mm. the company is providing you a product or a service and they get remunerated for that right oh. here there's no service the only service is you have to make, make money. money right and then you get paid to make money, money. right oh. so i mean i was like again not mm. like i'm taking a moral mm. standpoint but that that felt really wrong for me that point oh. i'm like i would love to do something, something. which and is improving society oh. or someone's experience and then i get remunerated for that today exactly. we shoot weddings we make memories for a lifetime oh. and then you pay us for that, that's fine oh. but there there's no higher objective oh. Mm. Oh. you just you're creating something and you're getting paid for it has a different feeling yeah, rather yeah. than getting paid for what you just make more money oh, yeah, no. yeah of course i mean i mean i had this discussion with my manager one day and he was like mm. you sure don't think so much about this <laughs> uh, you're providing like he had a big he, i think many people have asked him this before mm. like you provide liquidity to the market this mm. that pura bola mera i'm like um <laughs> 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 uh, so i lasted for about a year mm. um and then i came back to hyderabad for a friend sister's wedding at that point just like a one month mm. break kind mm. of thing and then i had a bunch of friends from school who were also in maradpalli who mm. were in the same kind of phase of their lives they're trying to create a stuff oh. this is tarun baskar who's the director now so right, he's been right. neighbors in maradpalli okay. and so that time they're like hey you know come we'll do something here mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. and my mom was like hey you come back sit next to me whatever you do is fine mom's very mom's oh. very happy for sons oh, to no. be next to them right. my dad was grumpy about oh, it but no. it's like okay fine so <laughs> right um so the leap of faith at that point of time to come back mm-hmm. to india and, mm-hmm. and start something creative which was 
probably just the surge of it where you are starting to see something on social media this is before instagram so maybe oh, facebook oh, is what we have oh, no. i think that and, uh, was exactly when uh, so it's probably to the 8 9 this is 12 12 okay. yeah so th- yeah th- so that's exactly when the wedding photography scene was actually like slowly burgeoning yeah yeah mm-hmm. yeah kana sir like kan nunchi start aindante is it because of social media that you know uh, wave anta you know wedding photo in, in our country at least yeah. or was it because of the ante naaku teliyadu gaani just start avutana maybe celebrities you know posting their wedding photo photos and stuff and even you know manaku kuda yes mark kuda atla kavali you know wherein mm. kodya professional ga creative ga shoot endante mundu kuda mana mana parents kuda change kuna phone ee kaani kind of chaala you know sure. not yes, filmy yeah, 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 or yeah atla yeah, yeah. yeah. so when or why did this whole wave of wedding photography start idea and i think you like started the, just yeah, then yeah yeah, yeah 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 i think the main thing is actually technology where okay. you had better cameras that could shoot in low light right oh. see, we, see for our parents weddings and all that mm-hmm. the photo had to be posed and had to be shot with the flash or whatever because that's all the camera was capable of mm. even the early digital cameras were not that good at low light right oh. so when technology improved when you had cameras that were much better at low light mm-hmm. uh, when lenses mm-hmm. and all improved you suddenly able to capture candid which is mm-hmm. not even possible technologically Mm. a few years ago mm. Mm. so okay. when the technology changes sub- suddenly able to capture a lot more candid moments some like hey this is cool we would like to do more of this right and the and the market also demanded more of that so when you right. see that and you see what is old school like hey yeah, this looks cool i want this on on so automatically that kind of aspiration develops for that so i think the initial uh, catalyst to the change is the technology mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and then social media basically helped to spread that on. word around because you're right. all able to see it right yes. historically right. again wedding album If your parents make it if i come to your house i'll see that i can't see right? yeah, right. so on, on. so social media is able to spread that to a wider audience true and then it just snowball effect from there basically yeah. was it uh, difficult for you when you started your game in the wedding photography scene or did you was it a smooth ride like the, and, i mean ha go on sir <laughs> and also like was it the wedding that you attended on your break that gave you the idea i, I can probably do this there is you know a market for this sunny lepote no meeru vapas ikkada ochaka you know laying down all your options and did you not like your lens yeah. wedding so I, no that was actually not even part of a thought process that time so i think mm. it was just like something creative we'll do mm. right. so what happened is tarun and all they had this company called vinodna geeta which is still have at that time right. they were doing wedding film for a, a their friends wedding okay and there was another photographer who was hired mm. but they said why don't you also just come and take some photos we've asked mm. them they said they're okay with you just coming and mm. shooting So I end up just going hey what I will go shoot and mm. then we'll do it. So then those photos being end up more popular than the official photographer's mm. photos to the couple. <laughs> Athan feeling <laughs> so <laughs> then that's where the first kind of then her friend called me up and she's getting mad a few months later saying Kishore I saw your photos from her wedding. Mm. Like Got I will pay you. I'm like oh you'll pay me. Oh yeah sure why not. Right. And that's how it really started off. Right. I, I was it was very I mean I was in my first I was just me sitting at home in my bedroom mm. doing everything myself but mm. obviously what time we built a right. team and an office right. because you have to scale up. Interesting. Um, but that's the first start okay. of it. And this was in 2012. 2012. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So back then, I think uh, the competition comparatively was much lesser. Hmm. Hmm. So how is it now? Uh, like, if I have to start photography, <laughs> I learn. I'll probably hmm. do my research. Hmm. I'll buy cameras. So if I want to enter the stream hmm. of wedding photography, how difficult would it be for me? Um. So I think there's two parts. So I think first part is like over there. Yes, the, I think that there the barriers we faced that time was just to educate the customer about what we're doing because mm. it was a cusp of the standard wedding photography started. Right. Mm. So most people didn't understand what it was. I think the first two days we just explained to people what we do. Mm. It's mm. like we don't ask you to pose and all this stuff, mm. which was fairly new to most of our clients. Right. So that was the barrier we faced. And I think once we kind of got that, it was a bit more smooth sailing. I think today what. uh people are facing i mean if you want to get in for example i think what you have to understand is that there's two parts one is the creative part one is the business part mm. and this is an advice i've always had for people is that just because you get something creatively does not mean you're going to be good at business wise mm. you need to have both skill sets because it's also kind of a very unregulated industry we do have issues with payments you have issues mm. with lots of other stuff which is not sorry, really spoken about mm. um so it's important you have the understanding of both before you get into it um i think the main difficulty right now is just really finding a voice in what is already a crowded market mm. that's going to be a biggest difficulty because uh 
I think post COVID, a lot of people have started their own wedding oh, photography exactly. business. Now, whether they're going to last or not is a different part. Mm. But at least for this short term, for the next two, three years, I see a lot of people doing it. Mm. I mean, yes. they may choose after three years saying, boss, this is not for me and, and move on. Or they may say, yes, this is for me and one. You'll have their ups and downs coming along the line. But for someone to start today, I think you'll really see why are you doing this? Because what value are you adding to the market by choosing to be a wedding photographer today? Mm. Are you making it better or are you just doing it because you want to make money? Mm -hmm. And I would say if you just want to make money, probably this is not the way you should approach creative things. For me, because I don't think we ever got into it for the money. Mm -hmm. We got it because something interesting to document was something that's quite fun to do. And then we got it purely for the love of the craft and money happened to come in along the way. Um, and I think when you get in with the mindset of making money, you either quickly burn out and figure oh, out that yeah. there's probably better ways to make money mm. or... Uh, you don't give it the full in terms of a creative output. Yeah, I think mm. that applies to any creative <laughs> yeah, job. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. So what were the major challenges you faced personally when it comes to wedding photography? Like initial um, days? Initial days, days or it was later on? So initially, like I explained, it was more of um, educating the customer, customer. what is it. Because mm -hmm. this was before Instagram, so not mm -hmm. everyone gets to see. Um, that was the first few years of challenge. I think once you start to scale up, then you start to worry about um, your expenses and kind of your overheads mm. compared to your income. Mm. And that's important because when you're doing it at home by yourself, you kind of have no overheads, which is what most people are starting off today. Oh. But the moment you realize that after a while, you can't work like because you can't deliver to clients on time. Mm. So <laughs> I can take 10 weddings. I'm sitting at home at a low rate. Mm. But then if I can't deliver to those clients, they're not going to refer me to anyone else. Then you have to start expanding. Then you have costs come in. Then, you know, it's, it starts mm -hmm. to pile up that way. Mm -hmm. But then you do deliver better experiences to clients that way. Then you have to start thinking of how am I building my business? Mm -hmm. Where is my, am I able to justify this cost to the client giving that level of professionalism, service and quality? Mm -hmm. um, that all starts coming to play. So that, that, I think the middle part completely peters off photography and goes purely into business development. Mm. Mm. After that initial burst of, of course, creative growth, right. you have to do that as well, mm. uh, which is, I think, usually the difficult part for most creative people. Exactly. Mm. So, I, na, na next question, yeah. ande, so for example, like, for uh, Ipidi Yashwant, mm. brother mm. wedding, ki, it was your team who did the photography. Mm. It mm. wasn't you. Mm. Mm. So, when your team is going and shooting mm. like a particular event wedding mm. and obviously they are getting to network with your clients mm. directly mm. Mm. Uh, through which like probably after an, an year or so mm. they would establish their own firm mm. and then they would directly reach out to the client and say you know I've mm. started my own firm mm. you can refer to your mm. family and friends it mm. and this is happening with a lot of people mm. who joined in as like you know like uh, support level mm, photographers mm, journey. Mm. now they have established their own companies Correct. Yeah, yeah. and uh, that is still happening yeah. like Walguda now they're hiring uh, you know mm, uh, they're mm, building mm. a team and Correct. then the same thing yeah. is happening so Daniwala over the last couple of years do mm. you think okay because now there are so many players mm. like uh let's say if the wedding is happening in Hyderabad people are not just looking at uh, ever ever unnar Hyderabad la photographers and mm. like, people are looking at options in Bangalore, mm. Delhi, and mm. Akkad Nichi they're Correct. flying down. Correct. So in the mandi roj unna pudu, mm. do you guys uh, like come down with your pricing or how mm. is it like? So I'll tackle the first part and second part because yeah. in the first part you spoke about how people start up their own right. things. So I think that as a photographer, if you're creative and love the art, you do not want to start a photography business. Because mm. you end up doing the business part more and doing photography less. Right. Mm. So all the guys who work with me and shoot with me, they love working with me because they don't have to worry about a single part of the business, business part. Right. They shoot, they do creatively excel, they focus purely on making great images and they right. get paid on time. Right. Mm. And I think that's the easiest part to be as a photographer. Mm. Right. Mm. The difficult part is taken up by the rest of the firm. You know, we have a client management person, we have data management, we have social media management mm. right. and all these other stuff, which is actually the more painful parts of it. Mm. Right. Mm. So, and that's the leap when you make, you don't realize what you're leaping from. To. Mm. Right. So when you go from being a photographer to running a photography business, you're letting go a lot of photography part mm. of it. Right. And I don't know if everyone is aware of that because when you let go of it, then suddenly you end up doing the stuff you don't no, like. No, yes, right. Yeah, right. yeah right. you start filing oh. GST every month and right. TDS and TC. This is literally what happens. Oh, right? no. so, yeah. So, and then uh, you actually don't do photography. So I think for mm. the guys, or at least all of them who work uh, with me and for me, uh, they, I, I envy them sometimes because they just get to do photography and don't worry mm. the part of it. Right. So, and that leap is a difficult leap to make. Sometimes people make that leap and then they realize, no, this is actually not where I want to go back. Or mm. that, I think that's something that's not really 
uh, there's no formal educational process about it oh, right there's no oh. no guideline to saying how to be a wedding photographer oh, oh. how to be a good photographer is a creative journey how to run a photography business is a completely different oh, journey oh. and you can't really mix them up because they're totally oh. different uh, things to oh. do right um so i think that's the first part what you asked right. oh. what the second part and the second <laughs> and uh, the second part is that they're going out and they're setting mm, up their own mm, firms mm, mm. so because there are so many players mm. in the market mm. today uh is it difficult to grab opportunities today given that there's so many players um i wouldn't say so i mean i think one thing i statistically i feel the country has an advantage is about 50% of the indian population is below about 35 years old right so we've got about 600 million people in the country who are going to get married in the next 20 oh, 30 years mm-hmm. so statistically you've got a huge number of people mm. who are going to get married Hmm. As, as long as population is a big advantage for India, the yeah, market yeah, for everything. Yeah. As long as you, all of you guys don't say I'm going to have live-in relationships, we are okay. <laughs> <laughs> like some okay gun money movie. Uh, <laughs> um, that's I think statistically we have that room for growth still. Right. Um, and the other part, I feel that as established photographers, what we have is a much more smoother workflow and experience for clients who know us. Right. Hmm. Um, so, for example, if you if your brother had hired me for his wedding or uh, Yashwant's brother had, they know how easy to deal with an experienced individual. So that there's a point of contact for everything. Right. Because planning a wedding in India is extremely stressful. Hmm. We as photographers don't want to add to that stress with bu- bugging you with small small things. So I think we know what to do very well. So th- both. pre wedding during the wedding post wedding it has to be a very smooth experience I and mean, many of our clients have told us we are so glad as we went with you because the least stressful part of the wedding and it was so smooth because of you know what you're doing mm, right which sometimes a newer player will not know what they're doing they're mm. going to make mistakes along the way they're going to figure mm. it out along the mm. way so even you, uh, with the logistics part logistics part pre shoot during right. shoot post shoot many things right so like right. losing data also things like that like right. we have a very uh, vehement uh, data back up policy so things like that so i think all of those things is what makes the difference between someone who's established and someone who's new mm. uh and of course i think creativity is, is i'm not talking about creative because i think that is something i'm assuming that everyone is doing very well mm. but above and beyond that what differs mm-hmm. uh, a larger company to a smaller company oh. because otherwise you will have one poc which is a photographer but suppose he's shooting for next 20 30 days he's not going to get back to you with your mm, photos for your wedding mm, right. you need something immediately for posting on social media mm. you need something to f- go for your wedding registration for mm, example mm. and all this record back no no sorry i'm shooting i'll get back to you next week and all the delay happens right so right. all of the people have told us i mean this is what we well, know right so well. um when you go with a larger company you know okay we are paying more but we get far more and our biggest source of clients is word of mouth right mm. because if, suppose you've hired us once you're going to hire us again for something in the family mm. siblings weddings uh, cousins weddings and friends and all that happens quite often uh, right. so i have a follow up question there so in the ke you were saying that you know uh, if people love photography they mm. wouldn't want to think about the business part yeah. which is why they would want to stick with you mm. Mm. but again uh, given that it is a creative field mm. um, and obviously when uh, let's say fav if done ma ipudu yashoda la annadi chesinanduku i might again uh, ask you to do it for another wedding Correct. that i know that is happening so obviously i would expect a certain style yeah. when i'm yeah. contacting you yeah so you would have to train or tell your uh, team yeah. that you know this is the style that i want to go with this is the signature of kishor krishnamurthy's photography Correct. so does that in a way limit their creativity creativity or how does it work like the creative part yeah no i think we attract the people who like the kind of work we do so everyone who um, applies to work with me or works with me is already aware of the style we're doing right so it's not against the grain of what they do I and mean, right. if they have a different aesthetic they probably don't want to work with they can work with a different company right. but working with us is a conscious choice that they are making and we're also making to mentor them in a similar way right mm-hmm. because i think uh, you know we have a large team so regardless of who goes to shoot the client will have the same experience because the brand guarantees that to you that mm. right you can go with anyone from the team your experience will be similar in terms of uh communication professionalism style of work quality of work everything's going to be similar because mm. that is a standard that i will work to maintain because right. i will mentor the staff creatively mm-hmm. and everything that so that but you don't have to worry about it mm-hmm. um it's not like you know uh, if if a different person comes you're going to have different that's that's my headache that's not your headache right right mm. yeah and like i said if a creative person is applying to work with you there's a lot of rigorous uh work i will do to ensure that person is suitable for our style of work before we even hire them right um understand because sometimes i always tell people that a lot of people apply to work with us right? mm. it's a frequent thing but i said sometimes you may have a similar visual uh workflow but you also have similar communication and professionalism workflows us mm. because just because you have a similar 
uh, photography style, but if you can't work with the rest of the team seamlessly, hmm. then you're a cultural mismatch. Right. That's also important. Right. Right. Got it. How many uh, shoots did you do in 2013 when compared to 2023? I don't know. You can't but, just ask me. I don't remember. Don't <laughs> no, but like, <laughs> because you just started off then. Like, yeah. I honestly don't know. Don't know. Well, when on was, an average, how many uh, shoots do you do? Uh, see, I mean, we've been doing weddings for about 12 years now, and mm. we shot about 650 weddings, I think, mm-hmm, roughly. Mm-hmm, so mm-hmm. about 40 to 15 average, you can say. Hmm. Yeah. Right. So, was there any year wherein, or which was the year wherein you know you started saying, "I'm sorry, I can't accommodate," you know, so and so. Let's say you know because my wedding season is at least so many, so many, so many couple at least just say about it. Starting obviously, you know, my many many shoots. So, and now the question is, uh, when was the peak moment mm. wherein you had to deny? Mm. service because i'm totally occupied are mm, mm. there any years or at a phase lo ochcharu i think i mean there there's not it's not like it's regular i think just post covid that was there because oh. nobody got married for about a while mm. and with this huge <laughs> surge of weddings yeah, suddenly yeah. happening out of nowhere right uh-huh. and that and we had a lot of weddings we had committed to during covid like for example before covid nobody knew covid was going to happen right. right so so all those people got married post covid mm. so we had to fulfill all those commitments to those clients along with the new ones. along with new clients as well so okay. i think we had to say no to a lot of new clients at that stage <coughs> uh, but today it's not like that i mean see we have four lead photographers in our team including me so we are capable of doing four parallel weddings at okay. the same time okay. so okay. with such an extensive team very rarely do we have that kind of uh, right uh, fully booked let's say but you know like even though if there is time and you can accommodate that particular event or shoot mm. did you ever deny a shoot for other reasons uh not like really. creative uh, like this not much to explore ikada ala no see again because like i said no see people who come to you at least come to our brand come for a specific requirement mm, right. so most of our clients always say we love your work because you're very candid mm. right. like people say that you know we're awkward at poses we're not mm. good at posing we love your work because you're good at capturing in natural mm-hmm. organically the course of the wedding and making us look great Right. Mm. So that's what most of our clients come to us for. I'm thinking if clients want a lot of pose poses, they have other posed uh, photography work. They have a lot of other right. photographers in the city or the country they'd go to. But our forte is that organic capture of people and yet making them look really good. Mm. Right. Uh, so when they come for that, very clearly, there's usually not a mismatch in terms of creativity. Right. Um, so we have that discussion obviously beforehand. So we're aware of what they are expecting from us and what we are delivering as well. Mm-hmm. And that's where actually word of mouth is very good because you know uh, Yashwant's brother will know exactly what we did. So he tells his friend, "Go with Kishor. Mm. This is what they do very well." So there's no miscommunication. Right. And I, and I've also very uh, put a lot of effort into curating our social media feed to also showcase that right. this is what our photo is. It's about storytelling. Mm-hmm. through organic candid moments captured over the course of your events mm. rather than forcing you to pose. uh we will of course do post portrait yeah. right? we won't do it but that is not the primary got it uh usp of our work mm-hmm. what was the most challenging event that you had to cover like you know personally you like me team gakunda uh, like wherein you had to go and you had certain uh, challenges with the props that were being used in the wedding or lighting or whatever um see there's two parts i'd say every wedding is a challenge exactly. okay. <laughs> because every wedding comes its own pros and cons hmm. the known dynamics main, to be honest yeah. yeah the main thing is that see i tell you like for example we so i shot weddings in america wedding western wedding where the previous day before the wedding they were rehearsal mm-hmm. to everyone's plan like you would literally put marks and notes so right. everyone knows what's happening there's no surprises right but you've been to telugu weddings like oh, no. <laughs> there's no rehearsal no planning it's just like gung ho we go oh, happen no. so We'll be like sitting with a perfect frame. Suddenly, one auntie will come in the frame uh-huh. and be like, "I'm going to stand here only." Uh-huh. And we have to adapt, uh-huh. right? You have to adapt. So I think the major part that we have developed a skill set is knowing the rituals very well. Mm. So you should oh. know where you should be at what point of which ritual, and it's almost like nice. also regional, right? So I know like what a Nellore wedding will be versus right. what a Hyderabadi wedding versus what a Vizag wedding will be. Because backup career only makes sense, right? So that that allows you to kind of know where you have to be, mm. and also in a very kind of unobtrusive way like not like okay i'm going to sit here i'm not going to move right. I'm gonna, no we have to be with the flow of the event right right and you have to adapt mm. uh like one frequent problem we have when we face is that so when the groom goes to tie the tali of the bride if they have a kandwa the kandwa will cover the bride's face mm. because he bends yes. the kandwa will go and hit her face and be like over oh, there on her face lad and like what is this so right. we know this is going to happen So you should tell the groom, please. I will hold this for you. Either we will hold it, or we'll ask someone behind them to hold mm-hmm. it for them, or we'll tie it behind their back mm-hmm. just for that 
30 right. 40 seconds of tying the tali right and that pre notion we oh. know this is going to happen yeah. from experience we are aware of this so we'll pre conceive and ensure it doesn't happen nice right uh, but that requires that knowledge exactly hmm interesting <laughs> so it's this is one example of a problem but there's chala, many 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 uh, many like this right chala observation and konni situations lo ante recent ga mem kuda pill letter ne amma friends andar allo i mean valan juicy vala frustration judagalta okka sari vala face lo photographer is that photographer ah itla ikkada live stream nadustunde itla vachi camera mundu itla nilchuntaru sir ikkada live stream ante pakkan jarigandi antu and see but for me it's it's actually a depiction into families in india mm. versus families in the western world right mm. in the western world i mean i've attended a lot of weddings of my friends mm. in the uk and all that where the guest list is 40 or 50 oh. because and they're like we just call people who the couple individually know mm. and want to be there oh. whereas here mm. you know how it is right everyone's invited so the dynamic is different in the beginning there itself True. Right. and secondly also there the couple is very much in control of what's happening mm. but here the couple almost very rarely knows what's happening mm. you just do what the priest tells you to do oh. there's a whole army of aunties behind you are controlling oh, everything oh, oh. Yeah. <laughs> so that is the dynamics of family here True. and everyone wants to feel involved as well which is fair enough and because there would be your padama or padana who's seen you grow up as a kid mm. and you can't tell on that day for that person because like oh, i've seen you for last 20 years they need to be involved and they have that emotional attachment to you mm. right so it's actually a representation of culture in mm. the country and representation of family structure mm. um and that's and that's something we have to respect right? it's so, a crazy insight must not chin that you know a deniki and daniki crazy nice and because i mean people often ask us that you know you've shot so many when you don't you get bored and i said mm. if you look at it as weddings you will get bored but you look at it as people you look at it as every wedding is different because every couple is different mm. the dynamics are different mm. uh the families are different so you look at two families coming together two kind of different kind of people coming together and you start capturing them as individuals as personalities mm. then you'll have something interesting to look forward every yes. single time if you look at okay this is just ritual and i check this i pay i pay and then obviously it'll be like a process how i think that having or on the go our data telusukuntu kuda shoot cheyadamlo maybe it will help emo ante naaku telledu maybe naaku which data ante understanding the person and understanding yeah. the families yeah so chaala simple ga cheppalante yes na gautam vibe ento telusu so what yeah. so, birthday ki nenu photos click chestunna ante i would probably you know oka certain way lo yeah. wherein avadi a expression a vibe capture ayeta to isthanu try sim ga anipinchu so ala antuna maybe I mean yeah I always tell all my photographers we are photographers but you're also psychologists hmm. you have to know interesting the uh, couple quite well the bride you have to be a support system for the bride and the groom hmm. because honestly it is super stressful getting married oh. hmm. because i have seen so many weddings where the bride has curated so nicely what she wants to do and her auntie will say leedu meer idi veskoli inda pedda bashing veskoli it's like my entire looks going to go if i wear that bashing oh. and she like no man paddi idu unde nobody told her for all these days that she's got to do that mm. and she's really stressing so then we are the only guys who are there in the room usually at that point oh, no. and then you have to calm them down saying it's okay yes. it's okay you're getting mad and so we end up being like a shoulder for them a support system nenu chusane idi chaala yeah ante experience is recently kuda ma friend pelli lo ama oka point degara asalu na kavalsinattu raavatledu photographs ani koddi etla outburst laga indi oka 2 minutes appudu iddaru vachi team nunchi ala gaadu kursho betti cool down chesi maatladi exactly in what is it that you want ani artham cheskone dani tarata teesaru and she was happy then so ante adi a frustration kuda build ayindi vere things valla akada ayinappudu on the call yeah and challenge is yeah. we also ensure that we have a consistent team across all your events suppose you have five days and day hmm. everybody someone new won't come the same person will come so by the time hmm. the wedding day comes because you'll have engagement pelli kutru pelli to sangeet hmm. mehndi wedding by the time the wedding because wedding is inevitably most stressful like hmm. the others are not so stressful that day comes the family is also comfortable that photographer mm. they know oh. it is kishore or suri oh. or Kar- oh. kartik oh. or suresh or whatever it is they calling them by name oh. not right. by photographer True. babu right. True. so in that do- both sides the rapport level ups right. then they are also comfortable with this person oh, no. so everyone becomes a little bit more true that is very then, important so then that's also what allows us to capture those candid moments oh, no. suppose tomorrow I just come and like put a camera and like who is oh. this person what is he doing oh, no. but you know me you will have a different kind yeah, of yeah yeah agree right. mm. True. So all of these little little things are very important in creating that comfortable so, no, no. atmosphere on that wedding day. No, no. Because 
like i said as it is super stressful for you mm. you're worrying about some decor not going yeah. something is going that uh, maybe uh, they don't have palli chutney they only have coconut oh. chutney something here don't you literally this problem has been masa dev is ki gaala na is ke liye and also you're not just working with one camera or one lens you're yeah. changing yeah. gear yeah. Yeah. throughout the yeah. event so yeah. that's also a challenge again but that's something we are used to because technically we know what we're doing right mm. yeah. so we are aware of our gear we are aware of our lenses so i think we are quite adapted that with experience and speed as well so i think honestly for us taking the good image is not a difficulty for us as photographers because we are really good at what we do uh the difficulty comes in the logistics of the wedding day in the planning the wedding day right. which is not in our control right what is in our control is us mm. right we have confidence in mm. ourselves mm. what we don't have control is the <laughs> wedding right. day right. which is where you have to adapt got it and work with the flow right uh, so uh, so it's a constant every every wedding is different every wedding has one challenges <laughs> right. i think that's what makes it fun yeah hmm. otherwise it get boring <laughs> yeah so talking about lenses mm. so ante a point nunchi endukante maa intlo maa maa dad degara film camera unde normal ga isthunde ante em interest lekunde na photography meeda kani you know gadgets meeda interest unde సో ఇంట్లో కొత్తది ఏదో ఉంది అంటే సిమిలర్లీ డిజిటల్ కెమెరా సో నేను కొన్నప్పుడు చాలా యూస్ టు నాకేం నచ్చేది అంటే ఆ లెన్స్ ఇట్లా బయట రావడం ఇట్లా లోపల వెళ్ళడం జస్ట్ వాచింగ్ ఇట్ ఆన్ చేసి ఆఫ్ చేస్తుంది జస్ట్ టు సీ దాట్ సో కానీ నాకు ఫోటోగ్రఫీ మీద ఇంట్రెస్ట్ ఎప్పుడు వచ్చిందంటే చేతిలో స్మార్ట్ ఫోన్ వచ్చినప్పుడు సో స్మార్ట్ ఫోన్ వచ్చినప్పుడు జస్ట్ తీసి నువ్వు ఇలా తీసే తీసేయచ్చు నా నా క్వశ్చన్ ఇక్కడ ఏంటంటే వెన్ ఇస్ ఇట్ దట్ యూ స్టార్టెడ్ లుకింగ్ అట్ ద టెక్నికల్ డీటెయిల్స్ ఆఫ్ కెమెరా అంటే ఇప్పుడు లెట్స్ ఏ నేనే ఇంటర్మీడియట్ ఒక స్టూడెంట్ చాలా బెస్ట్ కాలేజెస్ ఉన్నాయి మన సిటీలో ఇంటర్మీడియట్ కాలేజెస్ సో నేను ఆ కాలేజ్ సో అక్కడ ఒకడు ఉన్నాడు అనుకోండి అందులో సో అతను హీఈస్ గెటింగ్ ఇన్ టు ఫోటోగ్రఫీ ఇష్టం ఫొటోస్ తీయడం అంటే అసలు వాట్ ఆర్ ద కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ లెన్సెస్ అవైలబుల్ అండ్ ఏ సిచ్యువేషన్కి ఏ లెన్స్ వాడాలి అండ్ వాట్ ఆర్ ద కైండ్స్ ఆఫ్ సెన్సర్స్ యూస్డ్ ఇన్ డిఫరెంట్ కైండ్ ఇప్పుడు నికాన్ సెన్సర్ సోనీ సెన్సర్ అంటారు అండ్ కొన్ని కెమెరాస్ ఫోటోగ్రఫీకి ఈ బ్రాండ్ బాగుంటుంది అంటారు వీడియోస్ సోనీ బాగుంటుంది అంటారు సో కంపెనీ వైజ్ sensors mm. how do they differ mm. or do they even differ mm. and lenses av situation ki vaadali asalu sare lens per purpose nak telsi mostly andak telsu untu so yeah probably mm. Mm. could be a technical um so i think first just when i start getting involved in technical right. what was on day one itself like when i, I think Achha. by the time i in india itself i was quite curious when i was doing in school mm. when i went to the uk when i bought my dslr it obviously gave me huge mm-hmm. you uh, bought a canon right i bought a canon dslr right. yeah so i think uh, it's all self taught a lot of websites were there a lot of books and magazines so it's all kind of just the interest you take and uh, experiment with theory so you got mm. a camera you see what the book or what the web- website is saying and you try it out practically mm. and that's how you really learn you've got to make your mistakes but you have to see what is happening uh-huh. so i did a lot of that self learning myself mm. uh, at that time that's my technical part of it uh, in terms of you asking about lenses and brands i would say at least today i honestly don't think a brand matters even actually to be honest when i even bought my first camera which is with dslr which is more than hmm. 15 18 years ago god that long time ago yeah sorry mm-hmm. 8 <laughs> <laughs> that time my choice was ergonomic okay so i i think there was nikon there hmm. was canon there was no sony that time hmm. i think there was the two big brands no, I, don't do. i went to the store i tried both i just felt canon was more comfortable for me mm. and that was purely the ergonomic choice i made at that point of time got it now going forward today we still stick with canon all our team because i think organically once you start building up uh lenses mm. shifting brand is difficult because you've invested mm. so much in canon uh. mount lenses if you have to buy nikon you know buy nikon lenses completely mm-hmm. but do people use nikon for uh, wedding photography people do use i don't use but people use it okay <laughs> okay mm-hmm. and i think see i'm also you saying like sony is better for video canon is i think you can do excellent video with both, both. again uh-huh. there were times when one may have been better than the other hmm. right but every two years one guy will come better one it's just Got a competition it. at the okay. end of the in, the in the hands of the right creative the brand doesn't matter hmm. um it just depends on what you're comfortable with like for me i i think the canon menus are excellently designed within okay. the camera okay sony menus are terrible hmm Fuji again the camera I love I have Fuji as well I love mm. the cameras they're aesthetically beautiful they make oh, really good things clear. uh they have really good color uh, system mm. uh the menus are terrible again in Fuji okay. as well so there's little little things which ease so your experience cons. of uh, using the camera so e basic brands like Sony Cameron Nikon mm. ki 
హ్యాసిల్ బ్లేడ్ లాంటి కెమెరాస్ కి మేజర్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఏంటి సైజ్ ద సెన్సర్ ఓకే సో ఐ మీన్ దిస్ కైండ్ ఆఫ్ గోస్ బ్యాక్ టు ఫిల్మ్ డేస్ రైట్ వేర్ యూస్ టు హ్యావ్ మీడియం ఫార్మాట్ ఫిల్మ్ Okay. Which is about roughly maybe this big as right. a film. 6x6 or 6x6 cm by 6 cm, 6x7, 6x4, you have different formats. Right. Uh, that was the standard for photography. But then the, that doesn't mean the camera is quite large. I mean, right. I, I, I still have medium format film camera which I shoot. Hmm. Um, but they're chunky large cameras. So then they came up with a smaller film size. Hmm. Right. Which means your camera became smaller, your lens became, everything becomes smaller. smaller. That was when they came up with 35mm. Hmm. Which is what is the... gold standard for the sensor size hmm. okay. which is what your sony most cameras have canon uh, you do have a crop sensor which is smaller than that like fuji hmm. is even smaller than that but the general is 35mm hmm. Hmm. now hasselblad is bigger than 35mm right hmm. so it means the sensor is larger hmm. which does mean it has more detail capturing right. but as mean it's bigger as a camera and more expensive in terms and of and also na they'll say a uh, brand ki peru chindi uh, that is the camera they used uh, to shoot on the moon correct but that's also because that time that's what you had as well oh okay. so hasselblad was the gold standard at that amount of time so mm. that's what they took to the moon okay uh and it was a large 6x6 uh, camera so got it but so yeah. inko kati uh na question em undindi ante uh the sensors used in the cameras mm. uh like how do they differ brand wise am i no difference unda endukante the reason i'm asking this is naaku chaala interesting discussion and my friend my sound engineer venkatan mm. antu mm. so atanu ela annadante the way he captures sound is okay nen ippudu ee ee instrument ee uh, grand piano ni capture cheyali mm. or ee manushini capture cheyali for example me voice und ankonni mm. your voice is very different from mine mm. so based on your voice అతని ఉన్న ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ కి హీ నోస్ హీ కెన్ యూస్ దిస్ మైక్ టు క్యాప్చర్ యూ వాయిస్ ఇన్ ఇట్స్ ఎంటైరిటీ అది నాకు చాలా ఫ్యాసినేటింగ్ అనిపించింది నేను అట్లా ఎప్పుడు ఆలోచించాలి ఎండ్ ఆఫ్ దట్ నేనేం చూసా ఆ మైకే కదా ఇట్స్ క్యాప్చరింగ్ ఇస్ సౌండ్స్ మోర్ దెన్ కానీ వాటికి ఆ ఇన్సైట్స్ ఆ ఎక్స్పీరియన్స్ ఉంది కాబట్టి హీ నోస్ ఈ బ్రాండ్ కెన్ క్యాప్చర్ యువర్ క్యారెక్టరిస్టిక్ కంప్లీట్లీ అని అండ్ హౌ యూర్ అగైన్ లిస్నింగ్ ఇట్ ఆల్సో బికాస్ లైక్ అంటే వాట్ యూ మెంట్ బై దట్ వాస్ when i am speaking in a decibel level lo maatladta nu inko ka decibel level lo maatladta but overall ga if we are putting two different decibel levels with their maatlade then when we are putting it together our uh, listening experience ela undi adhe kada adhe ante yeah adhi yeah, kuda that mm. also plays in right so there is a, so na point indante ee brand you know it's uh, good for this characteristic mm. or not so similarly ఒక సోనీ సెన్సార్ కానీ క్యానన్ సెన్సార్ కానీ ఇస్ దేర్ ఎనీ డిఫరెన్స్ ఆ రెండింటికి లైక్ ఈ పర్టికులర్ లెట్స్ ఏ అవుట్డోర్ షూట్ యు నో దిస్ ఇస్ గుడ్ అట్లా ఏమైనా డజ్ ఇట్ ప్లే అంటే నేను మాట్లాడేది ఆబ్వియస్లీ బిగినర్స్ కోసం కాదు కానీ బట్ వెన్ యూఆర్ సో డీప్ ఇన్ టు యువర్ క్రాఫ్ట్ యూ విల్ ఆల్సో స్టార్ట్ లుకింగ్ అట్ దో స్టఫ్ కాబట్టి అట్లా ఏమైనా ఉందా లైక్ సో ఐ థింక్ విత్ టు డేస్ టెక్నాలజీ నాట్ ఎ సిగ్నిఫికెంట్ డిఫరెన్స్ ఎగ్జిస్ట్ ఇన్ యువర్ ఫుల్ ఫ్రేమ్ సెన్సర్ ఐ మీన్ ఫుల్ ఫ్రేమ్ ఐ మీన్ దర్టీ ఫైవ్ ఎం సెన్సర్స్ విచ్ యూ హ్యావ్ ఇన్ యూర్ majority of sony cameras your canon cameras nikon mm. so i think what matters is the way the image is processed by the software right mm. so sony is a different color science mm. nikon have a different color mm. science mm. canon is a different color science and fuji is a different color science mm. um fuji again is a smaller sensor but they still i think they have a very good color science for mm. fuji i feel a lot of times the color science is very good okay. because of their history of film manufacturing mm. whether you able to use photo straight out of the camera without much editing mm. which i don't feel is the same with sony nikon and canon mm. so that's why i have both i mean i professionally we use canon for all our wedding work but a lot of my documentary work i shoot with fuji mm. um and i think it's also a, um physically quite unobtrusive with a smaller body that's mm. a different part not mm. about mm. sensor mm. but mm. Like then again you have a larger format like your hasselblad like you mentioned mm. which again has a much different level of sensor size and also different level of detail it's able to capture mm. so the user have a lot of studio work um uh, where you want to have some kind of very accurate colors of the garments and things mm. like that mm. which is not sometimes not be able to do with this so okay. it's a different kind of uh, application but broadly if you see sony canon and nikon i would not say significant difference apart from the color science mm. um there's something called dynamic range which is basically the difference between the darkest part of the image and the, and the brightest right. part of the mm. image once upon a time this would be a huge number everyone should debate about mm. but again in, today it's marginal differences mm. you're not going to make a you know world of change between this not that this is going to make you a better photographer or worse photographer let me put that and yeah. the yeah. this is yeah. all of this comes when you're you know deep into yeah. this that is when you start 
playing around if you're shooting uh, the aurora borealis and you need some night as well then maybe at that point you may think about it hmm. but for large majority of photographers right. it's something you don't worry about yeah mm-hmm. um, definitely and also and ee madhya mana smartphone cameras kuda you know yeah. they are very good yeah. so me ke maina preferred idunda because actually మార్కెట్ లో అయితే చెప్పేది లైక్ వీడియోస్ కోసము ఐఫోన్ కెమెరా బాగుంటుంది అండ్ ఫొటోస్ కోసం సామ్సంగ్ ది బాగుంటుంది లైక్ డు యూ ప్రిఫర్ సో ఐ హామ్సంగ్ ఫోన్ సామ్సంగ్ ఎస్ ట్వంటీ టూ పర్ఫెక్ట్ ఆండ్రాయిడ్ which i've enjoyed for uh, photos much i don't do much video work on my phone so i don't really have that much of a video mm. uh, feedback on the phone as such mm. but for me i i like the samsung i mean, i think for me most than samsung it's the android ecosystem where i find much more exactly freeing than the exactly <laughs> ios ecosystem as of now uh, yeah i agree adi vere debate la tarot ma yeah that was one thing i wanted to talk about yeah camera uh, lenses my brother wanted me to ask you this question like how do you deal with your creative block mm mm i would say for me creative block is not the time but uh, not the problem time is the problem okay for me basically where i am right now where i'm running a full time wedding photography company we've got uh, almost 25 people on full time staff mm. and another 15 people are freelancers mm. i think that's a large time goes into management in terms of both creative uh and the business for them side and quality control mm. inspiration all that stuff and then business part clients and all that uh so to craft and carve out time to go and shoot something for myself is probably a difficult part for me right because i do have a lot of ideas i've got endless amount of ideas to shoot right. in the city i think hyderabad as a city or even any part of india has got tons of stories to be told waiting to be told mm. right but to take the time out to go and spend research and shoot is a bit of an effort right mm. um and it's not easy especially when you have got pressing commercial right. uh, mm. issues as well so it's a balance for me i think creative block i think time block is probably what mm. my issue is right. not creative block um like for me i've got ideas for maybe another 20 30 zines to be easily right. but to make a zine is a phenomenal amount of effort mm. so right mm-hmm. and i think konni uh, even if they don't convert into a magazine i think you keep posting them as like you know a series photo series like like i think you've done one for uh, paris ha the door photo yeah, series yeah yeah, yeah. yeah yeah and then you and then like when you choose and where and you have done a photo series sort of a thing correct but uh, when you're picking a theme like mm, ex- mm. especially i mean you have to tell me how this happened also the mm. concord mm, zines mm, mm. zines sorry so how did that idea happen because that is something that you went beyond the wedding photography mm, mm, where mm. you wanted to create uh, or curate you know an experience for mm. people who are going through that zine right Correct. so how did you come up with that idea and how did you like how do you start and end a mm. project because each theme i mean every issue you picked a different theme mm. Mm. and our favorite which is was the bars one mm. <laughs> because uh, i think chaala mandi ki who don't get to see the local bars walu ko a different perspective und i think one of my favorite shot was uh, uh okay local wine shop local in chief have shown how people ah, line up yeah, near yeah, the yeah, yeah. at the counter, counter to get their yeah, uh, yeah. bottle or yeah, something yeah. so that was a very interesting shot for mm-hmm. me so how do you create such uh, themes mm-hmm. or um so i think first but the inspiration to start concord came from a workshop i went to masuri i think in 2013 or 14 okay just conducted by spanish photographer sorry go on అసలు కాన్కార్డ్ ఎందుకు పేరు ఎందుకంటే దాని మీనింగ్ అందరి క్వశ్చన్ జస్ట్ లెటింగ్ యూ నో దట్ సో ఐ థింక్ దాట్స్ వర్క్ షాప్ వాజ్ అబౌట్ క్రియేటింగ్ అ స్టోరీ టు బీ డిపిక్ట్ ఇన్ అ ప్రింట్ ఫార్మాట్ ఓకే ఐ థింక్ ద ఫోటోగ్రఫర్ కండ్ ద వర్క్ షాప్ వాజ్ వెరీ గుడ్ ఇన్ లైక్ టెలింగ్ దట్ యు నో షూటింగ్ ఫర్ ప్రింట్ ఇస్ వెరీ డిఫికల్ కంపేర్ టు షూటింగ్ జస్ట్ ఫర్ షూటింగ్ అఫ్ ఇట్ బికాస్ ఐ థింక్ లాట్ ఆఫ్ అస్ షూట్ దీస్ డేస్ బికాస్ యూ థింక్ సంథింగ్ ఇస్ ప్రిటీ లైక్ సన్ రైజ్ సన్ సెట్ ఆర్ a butterfly uh-huh. or a dog or your niece uh-huh. or whatever uh-huh. it is um the moment you have an intended output from it in a certain way you've got to start changing the way you think from the beginning interesting so for me the intended output is a zine i know this is how the client or the customer is going to consume this content hmm. Hmm. that means i have to think about the when i'm creating the content hmm so exactly I, yeah we don't make a zine randomly with photos that we are collecting together right we shoot for the zine Mm-hmm. because we know this is a format that's going to be consumed in so we have a lot of control over the consumption which you do not have in a phone or a pc mm-hmm. right the speed at which they look at it or how they go through it, you can do whatever i mean like you know it's, it's very loose the way people consume content on a phone right but in a magazine you almost 
are forced to look at it in a linear format mm. so we have a lot of control over the way the story is told to the final viewer right so once you know that then you start planning the way it's almost like directing a movie in some way mm. i mean not, not that right. glamorous but i'm saying it's like you have to craft oh. that viewers uh, mm. pacing through the series mm. um which is only possible in a print format okay mm. so ante what are the variables here is it the size or the material used for the print ante so i think size was a huge thing for us to kind of lock in on the a5 size which is why it is a zine a zine is basically half of magazine mm. so magazine is magazine oh, this is zine okay so it's okay. a okay. mini magazine that's that's right. kind of the word zine comes from as well it's kind of half the size of a mm. magazine yeah, normally a4 so the a5 size mm. and a5 is kind of much more consumable easy right, much right. more portable as well so right. that's why we kind of fixed on a5 as a size for Done. the mm-hmm. thing uh material we did go for a very nice paper to use to print it as well because i thought it is important that this is perceived as something of quality and permanence mm. not as casual like a newspaper mm-hmm. uh makes sense yeah so because there are a lot of effort going into making these images they must be consumed and appreciated in the right way as well mm. right mm. as in terms of the material mm. um in terms of the way the why we chose the word concord we did want to show something that is growing and modern and like you know something about right. the future and all this various thoughts are coming to me think of words like metropolis and all these kind of words are coming um so i think we put concord because i have a a not as very significant love for aviation but i do like aviation and the concord plane was right. something mm. that really was broke barriers when it came right. into mm. into existence it was something that is nobody ever seen before mm. right i don't know if we ever going to see something like again in our lifetime mm. it was something that was revolutionary mm. right and that's kind of in fact you are also going to be revolutionary mm. right mm. so as concord the plane was revolutionary concord the zine as well nice. would be revolutionary mm. interesting okay so uh, like indag ne maatladutunna appudu for example ipudu abandoned the uh, zine choose se na ga adi koncham ekku interesting anipinchindi because those are things that you usually see on a daily basis mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. you're like ipudu in a local gullies lo kelthunna appudu you see a lot of abandoned yeah, yeah. vehicles i think in this vehicle no, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. so ఇప్పుడు దాన్ని పట్టుకుని ఒక థీమ్ లాగా చేసి యూ ఐ మీన్ ఎక్స్ప్లిసిట్ గా దానికోసం యుడ్ హెఫ్ గోన్ అవుట్ టు డూ ద షెల్ సో హౌ లాంగ్ డస్ ఇట్ టేక్ ఫర్ యూ టు యు నో స్టార్ట్ అండ్ దెన్ ఫినిష్ ద ప్రాజెక్ట్ రైట్ సో ఐ థింక్ ఇట్ ఐ వుడ్ సే అబౌట్ టూ టు త్రీ మంత్స్ రఫ్లీ ఆఫ్ డెడికేటెడ్ టైమ్ ఫర్ ఇట్ సో దేస్ ఫస్ట్ పార్ట్ ఇస్ ది ఐడియేషన్ రైట్ అండ్ దెన్ రీసెర్చ్ దెన్ అండర్స్టాండింగ్ విత్ ఐడియాస్ పాసిబుల్ టు మీ బికాస్ వెరీ ఫ్రీక్వెంట్లీ యూ హ్యావ్ ఐడియాస్ అండ్ రీసెర్చ్ వేస్ విల్ స్టాప్ బికాస్ it may not be a practically exec- executable idea or that may not content may not exist right. so ideation is initial then exec- then research and then you actually execute any example for that ante research they are agi pay na project uh, i think i'm sure there's some we did before na edo good like something want to okay. but yeah few we did happens with, yeah it happens yes. and i'm curious in the research or just in the agi yeah yeah because you can't go out and see okay there's not enough i think so there's some that we probably can do but requires a lot more effort mm. in terms of either in terms mm. of uh, connections right. or uh, money or whatever it is there's other Resources. barriers got it uh, which may not just be barrier of photography but could be secondary barriers that will stop us like right. i could say i have an idea to go and shoot the life of modi it's not going to happen yeah. like mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. if i'm amit shah san i can probably go and do it but <laughs> <laughs> so that's also a barrier right, uh, <laughs> right. Oh, oh. got it got it um so i think barriers not don't always come in terms of photography there could be other barriers as well but mm. ideas are there and then we kind of do a bit of research we go around we may shoot a few photos and come back and say this is not working sometimes it is a visual barrier so it doesn't look t- great together mm. so okay that also could be but then so there's ideation research some test photos you go you come back we sit together do some discussion do some feedback and then we start shooting and when you start shooting we come back so when we shoot there is again i said the clear intention to be made in the print format mm. so we know how we're going to make layouts mm. we always start thinking about while we're shooting okay will this photo look good at this photo because what is important is that there's no point of having this great image if it's not part of the story it's got to work with the storyline mm. right mm. Uh, so storyline is paramount and also along the way you will find inspiration for example um the issue we made chintamani which is the latest mm. one about mm. yes. the uh, drama the, troupe yeah, in, uh, in nalgonda uh. we got access to them because one of my photographers is from nalgonda mm. and he knows the person who leads that troupe through his family connections mm. so okay. we were able to get access that way right. if i go and talk to them they never give me access i'm uh. an outsider uh. right so he was able to get access and along the way while they were shooting they were spotting stuff in the area that was interesting for them visually mm. right so there's also that initial research phase so initial research was going talking to them understanding what they do when they do so when they perform the drama we have to make sure we were also available mm. right so a lot of that research and planning happens 
and then there's a lot of visual inspiration along the way mm-hmm. and it's it's not like uh, every edition ki mere valley mm-hmm. shoot chesna yeah, kada like yeah. uh, the kanchipuram edition uh, yeah, yeah. you collaborated with amar ramesh correct. wherein he did the shoot correct. and you curated the uh, ed, 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 that particular yeah, yeah, edition yeah. so was did you have that clear intention that you want to encourage collaborative work was yeah. that the clear intention yeah so there? i think it was not about just me shooting i think right. I, i i did shoot a lot to kind of set the visual tone of what the zine is supposed to be right mm. and then i want to work with people who can provide that same visual language and storytelling tone because honestly it's difficult there some other photographers who are friends of mine saying we want to shoot for the zine and i said okay but when then they realize what goes into this which is very different from a typical commercial shoots like mm. i don't think most wedding photographers would be able to make a scene mm. because very different from what you may approach that way oh, no. it right. requires a totally different mindset mm. um so that that mindset and evolution is not so easy but it is a part of the way i would curate people to shoot for the zine and also that's where I'm, my personal mentorship helps who are shooting it right mm. when like when chitamani was shot i was not even in the country i think that time but mm. we were doing video calls with mm. the guys who were shooting mm. to mm. to review what they were shooting along mm. the way mm. and picking on details that they could do more on and things mm. like that ante edaina oka example igaltara like let's say nenu nenu me photographer anukonde nenu elli teesanu oka picture so like how would that interaction be ante technically like no is e element bond the ikkada so you know try to focus on that ana lepothe a process so i think it will also be from you saying why is that element important Mm. suppose you're shooting let's say chintamani nen diskon ah chintamani no like there's a, there's a shot of these guys that this book and kana um yeah so i think for here so if you see this uh the visual uh which i say uh, sorry like for example even this right this is actually quite a strong and important visual hmm hmm like i can't read telugu okay right, but right. my guy was like sir this is important okay fine this is important uh-huh. so i think uh-huh. they also understand what is important and see for example the difficult part for us is picking what's the cover photo cover photo mad on this this is important also yeah. that, because yeah. it has to kind of show also summarize the finishing it has to thing. encapsulate the yeah, entire yeah, uh, yeah. team yeah and then you have to have the inner cover photos also important. right mm-hmm. and this final photo is also important mm. so mm. these kind of are the bookends Got right it. of the story so this is something what we really discuss upon quite early on mm. right what are we going to plan for this starting yeah. and ending laga right. but this photo was quite kind like we didn't plan to get this photo but mm. we happened to get this great photo which no. really encapsulated the whole no, no. mindset of what is true. a drama troupe and we were able to get in this photo right uh like this photo i love like this detail shot mm. is something we never in thought of mm. these so shots are actually very yeah. interesting yeah. that so but there are some the photographer on the way thought and like okay i'll capture it mm. right and thought it's a little bit of an insight into those people right uh, without even showing their face right mm. right mm-hmm. uh and like you know this detail this poster detail mm. all these little mm. things are something you can't really pre-plan right oh, no. mm. what was pre-planned was these this was very well yeah. planned because i was super keen on it because these guys are not professional artists hmm. they all have normal jobs hmm. and i think there was a similar style like this for the bicycle edition correct yes yeah. you got it yeah that but that was just like one portrait of course in yes. the profession i mean what i like one particular one i really liked about this is this uh, the guy who is a bus conductor so we went on the bus and took his portrait at his work oh nice and this is this guy so oh. when i so when you show Damn. this contrast <laughs> and this, and this is also what i meant about how you can tell the story only in this print format right yes. i can't do it on instagram mm. i can't do it on a website i can only do it this format where you're opening it and like hey and then like it it strikes you after a few seconds right right and that is also intentional mm. i know it's going to take you you will be like okay okay and like yeah. wait a second oh, <laughs> no. yeah yeah so it's yeah. all what we think about oh, we are right. choreographing your journey through this book right it's all intentional it's not coincidental so that's the yeah and now the bars the jo set up pura ayindi you know local bar the left kondi ah yeah 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 the posh bar lo right kondi similarly local bar bar lo kada itla agu peg pattukon avutunu posh bar lo kada phone pattukon itla avutunu and danlo kuda one of my favorite shot is i think there's a wide angle shot wherein one guy is facing the wall huh. and he's just drinking huh. Huh. a chala bond yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a lot of these are thought and plan i mean this right. is a lot more than what we may publish but this is right. all right so where, where are these bars like hyderabad <laughs> chennai elta <laughs> want to go <laughs> <laughs> it's all hyderabad It's all I think majority of us. I mean, I know we started Concord with the tagline saying "photo stories from India," no. right. but we've shot pretty much virtually most in Hyderabad. We've shot that uh, rice, salt, meat, and spice in Andhra as well. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, mm-hmm. that's probably the most ambitious issue we've done in terms of geography. Right, right, okay. right. Um, because we traveled to four different places, 
but mostly it's in hyderabad i mean hyderabad so those bars were all mostly uh, permit room kind of places and dive oh. bars oh. where we used to go and just and it was very difficult to shoot uh, because you can't really go with the camera that's one of the reasons i love the fuji camera mm. i shot the entire thing with the fuji camera because it was so inconspicuous Mm. and you could just go and do it and nobody really know what you're oh, doing no. oh. obviously we also had to buy drinks right mm. so we can't just go and say oh, no. just like sitting spinning like click click so <laughs> it was a it was like its whole stealth operation basically we were doing this um and then the camera also had uh an app that i should connect my phone to so mm. i could put the camera then take photos of the phone mm. oh so you don't have to yeah. click the shutter right. as well so a lot right. of these things we had to do along the way to create the series so you said uh, geographically that was more ambitious mm. Mm. is ante itlanti reasons wala na because i nenu oka identify chesindi entante one issue is 200 one issue is 500 mm. Mm. like that difference is There's coming there's no 500 issue not only, 200 200 and 150 that is because of the cost of print over the years oh, uh-huh. okay. nothing else uh-huh. okay. <laughs> nice. because this is, this is very much a pa- project of pure passion which doesn't make any money for me like the cost right. of printing is very close to the final cost of publishing right mm-hmm. uh, uh, we have actually went to the same uh, printers ha, ha. posters ko some they like minimum sku is 500 uh, like thank you so much <laughs> yeah so it's very close to the cost of we i don't make anything like na ka the price just then ardham ayindi it's yeah. not because the quality of print and paper exactly. is very high yeah. exactly. which i am very paramount about i so think I mean, it's uh, mostly that you want people to experience yeah, that exactly. art form no, that's no. it that's yeah. it so the cost of increases has been cost of it's been the first issue was came out in 2015 hmm. that was 100 rupees right and i think my cost of printing was 93 or something hmm. now 90 rupees nobody is printing anything okay <laughs> right. <laughs> so our cost of printing come to almost 200 now Mm. And then now when you know, we have websites with so a payment gateway and all these other things, mm. when you partner with stores, they want a percentage. Oh. So all of this stuff comes up. Mm. So we end up having to put a little bit more. I think growing next issue might become even more expensive because mm. costs are gone up significantly. Oh, right. GST has gone up significantly since the first time I printed. Mm. It was sales tax. Then GST came. Then GST. Then GST kept increasing. So mm. all these complications are there. So uh, is. the price is reflective of cost of manufacturing mm. is not reflecting of cost of shooting let's put that way mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. cost of shooting is borne by me completely so nice uh, got it yeah next what i wanted to ask was uh, earlier you were telling that you know you kind of uh, collaborated with amar ramesh mm-hmm. to do one of the scenes mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so amar ramesh nikakunda did you ever have the opportunity to meet your other competitors like all the time i think you, you guys catch meet. up yeah uh-huh. very regularly we meet all of us meet oh nice yeah. everyone like Huh? Who all, like who all do you re- usually catch up Suman, with? Suman, Vijay, Sam, Ashwin, right? Uh, Kamal Kiran, right? Mm. Siddhu Soma, Harish, right? Mm-hmm. So we all have WhatsApp groups, so we all meet oh, up. Oh, nice! <laughs> Me, usually, me discussions then we don't talk. Um, I think our discussions mostly we tend to not talk too much about work because Obviously, we are all like yeah. tired of work. We just want to have a drink and relax mostly. Mm. Right. If you talk about work, sometimes we just come to the usual common problems everyone has, mm. which is be people not paying on time. Right. <laughs> right. 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 right, right. <laughs> um, or uh, it'll come down to some basic something about camera, some new technology at least. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, but, so yeah. in that, you were telling me that. Uh, you know when we were talking about the kanchipuram edition that mm, you did mm, uh, mm. so you said amar ramesh is pretty good with his lighting mm, mm, mm. so ala like what inspires you like like okka photographer lo what mm. is that one element that actually inspires you mm, i wouldn't for me i i would say it's not something that i can take down from photography that inspires me for me my main inspiration is the world outside us okay i don't take inspiration from significantly from other photographers i take inspiration from Hmm. nature nature being urban landscapes or cityscapes because all of my zines are inspired from what i see around me hmm. right uh, be it abandoned or whatever it is because the whole idea and ethos of concord zine is to bring attention to things that happen around us but are forgotten in hmm. the hustle and bustle of daily hmm. lives hmm. it's to make you stop oh. and force you to admire the art around you anta patich ko amart gurinchi yeah hmm. but when it's photographed and presented to you in the right way you'll suddenly realize hey this is actually oh. something that could be consumed as art as well because like we've sold prints of things we shot in the bars mm. issue right someone said can you make a large print for me right mm. two three people have bought prints like from the bicycle issue as well mm. right so basically it is things that could be made into an art mm. to hang in the mm. house mm. but unless someone takes the effort as a photographer to show that to you mm. you're not really going to have the mindset to do it i think that's what our role as a photographer is at the end of the day right so and mm. probably uh, the way i phrased it is uh, wrong emo mm. probably the word inspiration is wrong i mean uh, my question was like but elante put nak naban varma di i like his work i mean uh, monochromatic uh, mm. colors so tan edaithe chestadu i like that 
that in his work mm. and uh, joseph radik din ake mistam ante like mm. the angles that he chooses to shoot like koni low angle unte koni high angle unte very peculiar unte like the angles that he is choosing to uh, capture a particular mm. frame so atla like that i'm asking like koni uh, signatures what signatures do you see in other photographers um again what i would go back to the, i don't really see much of current photographers work okay. as an inspiration mm-hmm. i right. go back to my photo books which i have seen right which so for, for me i think it's very important that photography from other photographers everyone has their own style they may do it and i'm yeah. not really sitting to analyze that style mm-hmm. right what i'm saying is what is pushing me to create stories okay which so dissecting someone else's work is not going to improve my work in any way mm-hmm. right uh but being curious about the world mm-hmm. is going to improve my work and that curiosity could come from the world around me it could come from Uh, a painting it could come from music it could come from a movie hmm. but that inspiration is something that you can't really predict when it's going to hit you but it'll hit you hmm. uh, so i think that conscious dissection of other people's work is something i have done definitely when i was in my early days of photography when I'm maybe oh. again 15 17 years ago but in the current time you don't really do that anymore I, I, right it doesn't really serve any purpose <laughs> right right, right. Makes, makes sense, sense. um because i don't think rithik roshan is going to sit and analyze what shahrukh khan is doing or shahrukh khan or i'm not comparing mm. it to that same level but right. they, everyone has their own thing they do and they and they look at more about perfecting themselves and their own style of work mm, as right. to worry about what the other person is doing got it got it so also like okovela you know for a beginner who's mm. just uh, starting out uh, taking photos endukante ipudu like online aithe you see you know konni basic uh, mm. rules untai you know mm. in photography to mm. capture mm. good pictures mm. atla like lines mm. gurinchi maatladtharu mm. one third rule maatladtharu so what would you suggest for a beginner like you know obviously just start shooting mm. but when is it that you have to consider all of those things and probably you know in my ni craft law i think those rules are very important in the beginning itself okay. because the rules are very critical uh, to build your craft without worrying about that uh, composition techniques because if you follow them you're going to get good images mm, mm. you can start to worry about breaking them once you've expertized in them but in the beginning if you don't even know what you're doing you're just shooting willy nilly mm. you're never going to get to that level where you start thinking about it so you i would say it's very important you start thinking of rule of thirds mm. and if you not overburden yourself with the basic mm. like yeah. three rules i think so. rule of thirds is a, is a good one to start with the way you position your subject within the frame is very important mm. things like leading lines things mm. like perspective all of those rules are even used by the you know high end photographers True. or even more experienced photographers because those rules don't change right. because right. they're not based upon trends they're based upon facts of the human eye right. they're about facts about how you Person. visually consume right. an image right. and that is biological that's not going to change True. anytime soon no. right. so those rules are very critical in the way you build your base of photography mm. um and yes over time you can choose to break them and you can choose to experiment all those things but i think there's even rules about how you should crop a human body um you should tend not to crop at the joints because it looks unnatural you can crop not at a joint so things that are also part of the way you see it and cropping doesn't necessarily mean cropping uh, post camera but even in camera as well got it, got it. So these are a few things that if you learn them and keep them as your uh, in your repertoire mm-hmm. you'll use them as and when mm-hmm. and it's an important part uh, because uh, when you see an image as an untrained eye mm. you may not be able to say why it's a good image no no manchu gun jeptaru but you know why is it no no but the trained eye as a photographer needs to make a conscious choice of everything to create that image mm. um sorry for let me say for this example this is a example of rule of thirds this image right mm. i mean oh no. for you you like hey it's just him painting but we have composed in a certain way where this is coming all that has been a conscious thought process by the photographer to put it mm. right uh, but for the consumer it's it's a nice image what exactly mm. is rule of thirds can so you when you when you divide uh, the frame into uh, grids. grids of nine uh-huh. so i think in your phone also you can get it yeah, across you, the yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm. so the idea is usually place your subject of points of interest where the nines culminate or along those lines mm. so centering the subject is not always interesting like for him the subject is not centered oh. right but it looks better without the Correct. centering of subject oh. uh think if you want to take passport photo you send a subject uh-huh. but like <laughs> i mean see sometimes you do center subject but not all the time all it's the just time. that this is an option for to use a rule of thirds to create something aesthetically pleasing mm. without worry i'm sure you've seen stuff around you you'll see that used here and there the moment you start to look for it actively mm-hmm. you'll mm-hmm. find it everywhere mm-hmm. um where the horizon is placed where the sun is placed many things mm-hmm. along the way mm-hmm. so besides photography what else do you do like off season when there are no weddings apart from concord like 
What, um, what so does? I think we do a lot of editing off season because after short weddings, you edit the wedding. Right. <laughs> right. Mm. That's a significant part of the work. Mm. Mm. So we do a lot of that editing. We do a lot of creative inspiration for my team as well. Mm. Uh, I, we do work on Concord Zine. Um, I do read a lot. Mm. I think because I think as a creative individual or as an artist in any way, it's important that you're not just limiting yourself to one spectrum of uh, expressing yourself. Mm. I write, I read. So, you know, I have text-based expression. And obviously even you're shooting, you've got to see good work as well. Mm. Uh, see good movies as well. Mm. Because I very strongly believe you create what you consume. If you're right. going to see a lot of random reels, you're going to make random oh. reels. If you see fine art films and you see really good quality visuals, then you will create that. Mm. So mm. you have to curate what you consume as well. Like for a lot of my photographers, I always say when they're going to join me, I say, who do you follow on Instagram? Mm. And I make sure they follow the right people. Mm. Because when you follow the wrong people, you're seeing the wrong kind of work and you're assuming that is good work subconsciously and later you will go and create that. Mm. 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 But if you follow the right kind of work, that's what we're going to go consume. And that's what you're going to create as well. Mm. Uh, and also you're married to someone who's creative in her own space. Correct. Mm. Does mm. that bring in any X factor? Um, I think it just is good for us because we both know the difficulties of a creative person right. uh, which we're able to bounce off ideas of each other quite a lot right um, and that is something that's only possible because we're both creative so mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. easy discussion of maybe some barrier that I may have or something that he may she may have or some difficulty that we're facing in work mm -hmm. there's someone to kind of give you a, a second opinion about it mm -hmm. from right. a creative perspective not right. a non-creative perspective basically right any and recent movies that you liked in the car? Movies, gura, you know, what you consume is important. Oh, oh, I don't say I, I haven't gone to theater in a very long time. Uh, okay. Like a very long time. <laughs> but you, you worked on, uh, I think you worked with Tarun Baskar for Inagran came. I do the posters for his movies. So I do All the poster the shoot. For, even for Kida. For Kida, well, I did not do. I was not available. But for the okay. other two, I did posters right. for him. Uh -huh. um, then so I how, did how different was it? Uh, when compared to the regular photography, like what are the guidelines that you get when you're working for a film? There's no guidelines because I know Tarun well. So mm, we're okay. quite creative. <laughs> <easy. laughs> no, no. So we yeah. really, we do catch up for a while before that. We'll go, go for a tea or something and we'll do some sketchboards and oh, we'll discuss okay. what the concept is. Okay. But the rapper was very good because we know oh. each other for such a long time. Oh. Right. It's diff easy for him also to work with me rather than working with someone else and oh. for me also. So that, that rapper was what is important to create that visuals which are iconic. Because I still remember some of the posters that were done for Inagran mm. Kemaindi. There's one aerial shot where an all yeah, four yeah, guys yeah. are looking. Oh, yeah. That's, that's, the that's yeah. actually, the, that shot is based on what we used to, we used to go sit in a chai cafe in right. Maratpali and do that. Like then, so we had to recreate that shot. So we got right. that into the studio mm. and we got a ladder for me to go on top of and do all oh, that work. So nice. that was kind of recreation of what we used, used to spend to time oh, as. No, no, no. Right. We had to light it up in an interesting way. But this is all about like, you know, organic discussions mm. and right. plan the shoot and execute the shoot. Mm. Mm. It's not, and also for me, he usually explains the story to me in quite in detail, right? So mm. like, you know, this is what it is. So, the, so I understand the vibe of the movie mm. and how it has to be showcased because um, too often these days, movie posters are just an interesting portrait, mm. but a lot of graphic design oh, done right. later. Right. Right. Oh, no. Oh, no. For me as a photographer, I don't believe in that too much. I want to create a story in the image. Oh, mm. I don't want the graphic designer to come and do the storytelling. Mm. I want me to do the storytelling. Right. So that requires the director to also understand that and work with you on that. Mm. Right. But these days, most directors of movies or web series would much rather prefer shooting on a white backdrop and we'll see later. Um. Mm. But the visualization has to come while you're doing the photos as well. Right. Uh, recently I did photos for this uh, web series called Maya Bazaar as well. Mm. Okay. So where again, we had kind of worked with the designer beforehand itself mm. to plan the way the photos are going to come, the, the visuals are going to come out. Mm. So we did the visuals, we're kind of planning the positioning of the people and all that stuff. Mm. Yes, it was done in a studio, but it was done with a clear output in mind. True. Not just shot and we'll see later. Mm. 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 And that gives you that excitement to work. Oh, Otherwise, no, doing no, okay. generic passport right. photo and then okay, the no. designer will see whatever later. Edit. They'll apply all the filters, colors. Right. And then that's not really... You're not contributing as a sure. photographer. You're contributing as a technician. You're just clicking the photos. Uh -huh. mm. Are you applying your mind? Uh -huh. That's important, right? So. Mm. Nice. <laughs> Editing lo <laughs> kuma. <laughs> no, because I think that's also part of uh, um, the difference between uh, what people think, oh, you just press a button as a photographer. Mm. I think pressing the button is absolutely the easiest part of photography. Mm. But choosing when to press the button, why to press the button, at what timing do you press the button? What mm. are you going to even point the camera before you press the button? Mm. Those are the decision-making process which make you a photographer actually. 
knowing uh-huh. the shutter speed iso and aperture hmm. and taking photo does not make a photographer and i think your job doesn't end there like you said you know even for weddings you need to curate the album correct yeah right. so it's, it's a whole shooting process right. from the beginning to end so i think right. and but then that again you know we think of that when you're shooting as well so right. so whatever goes in your head hmm. before you press the shutter button is more important than the act of pressing the shutter button right like it's like Michael Schumacher just presses that, but it's not like there's a lot of thought that goes uh, into press, pressing the accelerator, right? Uh, like, uh. That thought is what differs and makes every creative person different from me. Sorry, right? you said Michael Schumacher. Oh, yeah. you watch Formula One? I don't. I okay. just know his only name. Yeah, I don't. Alex Perez. Sorry. We'll all know one Valentino Rossi. We'll know one more names. Okay. Okay. Got I never it. watch sports. I still don't find it very difficult to watch sports. Right. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Anyways, but that's a different discussion. Yeah. um inka so uh, you were also talking about exhibitions mm, and mm. something that you did uh, in june last year Correct. Uh, something around urban yes so what yeah. was that actually so for me uh, it kind of goes into my interest for the city and the growth of the city so right. i want to do a visual series which shows the unplanned urban growth of the city mm. uh, so one large part of that was no parking signs okay um, and you did uh, zine on that zine. as well i did a zine on that as well the yes. exhibition was a combination of four series uh, okay. but now no parking was the biggest one we had a, a very large print of no parking that we had done in the uh, in the exhibition hall oh. uh, and no parking is something for a lot of us is just a no parking sign hmm. but for me i really look into it as a visual metaphor for unplanned urban growth because why do you need a no parking sign mm. we have no parking signs because we have too many cars hmm. and we don't have parking spaces for the cars hmm. suppose in this household all of you bought a one car and there's six of you where will you park your car hmm. when you built this house you never thought you're going to have six cars hmm. so you'll end up parking on the road in front of the baju wala fir hmm. then he'll put up no parking sign hmm. so and then when you go to a shop there's no parking but then you have a car now yeah so there's no provision for parking and you end up having to put your sign so this is actually and also why do we need so many cars because there's no suitable public transport that is going to connect you from Man. door to door oh, oh. covered kind of transport with our oh. weather and heat and rain hmm. right so all of these things are what are required when you don't have that everyone buys cars and you end up hmm. right. so for me no parking is no parking but it's also much 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 more important oh. than no park hmm. because all the no parking signs i normally shoot are also hand painted ones not the printed ones right because when it's painted by hand it also means someone's taken the effort to paint it mm. the printed ones are given by a company that right? icici bank will give you no parking that's mm. a different thing mm-hmm. yeah. but when you paint it it's a choice you're making consciously to paint right. outside your house or your company wherever to paint that mm. which means you're facing this problem mm. which is a bigger oh, oh, issue no. True. right and under our perspective did you get that perspective ante antar depth lo chusindi is it because you studied something But, I mean, Parking I think it's because of my economics the, kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, 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 because yeah, you did yeah. political science. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. do you usually look at things from yes. that perspective? Yes. yes. Okay. Yeah. 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 Okay. Nee na thalam kollen car elte karel na parking le the idha sale endo kundi issue ani. Endo ani ko water idhi le. Right le ko se endi. Aye se thodi ke dalus. Yeah. So buying that that is. Uh, so the other series we did is about cables. So all the big cables we have of internet. Mm. Oh yeah. Mm. Uh, that was a. part of it because again why do we have those we don't question them we see them we just look at them and we kind of move on but you start questioning them so i made an entire series about them because again that is a part of how internet is coming to our house hmm. through a cable which if it was planned better it could have come underground into your house directly hmm. doesn't have to come hanging in the air and right. in circles that's all because there's no existing infrastructure that supports to get exactly. internet right. houses and also in 10 years these cables won't be there when you have 7g 8g internet hmm. right it'll become faster than cables at one point it's inevitably going to happen hmm. technology will grow maybe in about 5 10 years we'll have no cables as well right. so this is a transitionary phase we're coming from that old dial up internet mm. to this cable oh. internet eventually we'll go to cable free internet mm. but right now it is again a strong visual metaphor of where india as a country is growing mm. where internet access is almost paramount for every household when you're working from home or anything right, oh. right. and that's why we have all these cables around mm-hmm. so for me wherever i see something i always think about why is this there I, there's a sense of question i'm asking about why 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 mm. Mm-hmm. and then i try to answer that question through my photography series mm-hmm. right right so uh, one more thing that we wanted to understand was that given that ai is growing every day so what do you think is the impact of ai is having in photography as well as editing also hmm. so i think ai is for me it's a tool um and i think if you're a uh, see a camera is a tool for me let us say even my no parking series mm-hmm. 
I can shoot with my phone or my Fuji camera or my Canon camera. The device is only a tool for me to achieve my vision. Mm. Right. So as long as you're a photographer with a vision, the AI may help you create your vision. Right. Mm. But it's not going to replace you. Mm. Right. But if you're a photographer with no vision, it's going to replace you kind of thing. Right. right? So mm. you have to really mm. shore up your skills of the creative part of it. Because let's see, you see, I think when my parents got married, the guy who knew to operate the camera as a photographer, as long as he knows to put the settings correctly in those oh, film cameras okay. with the shutter speed setting and ISO and aperture, he is qualified to be a photographer. Mm. Now, as technology has improved, now the exposure is set automatically. Mm. So that, that skill set is no longer sufficient to qualify to be a photographer. You have to learn more. True. I think this is the next disruption where a basic set of skills will kind of not give you the bandwidth to call yourself a photographer. Mm. You have to really up your game. Hmm. Or you'll be let behind. Right. And you may choose to let be. That's perfectly fine. Oh, no. But I think it's just a new tool for us to express ourselves visually. Oh, hmm. But you are still, as a good photographer, you still have to be the one that is creating the visual in terms of this is my vision for a photo story. I may go to uh, Dali and say, make no parking signs. Hmm. Hmm. But I am choosing to go and tell Dali to make no parking signs. That's not going to decide to make that by itself. Oh, no. It's not going to come up with yeah. the idea of it. Hmm. True. Uh, it's only going to assist me mm -hmm. in furthering my idea of creating uh, a series. Or probably, Dani ke, you know, Dali ke ni amta data itchi. So it'll probably understand your style and your aesthetics. And when you ask for, give me no parking signs. Exactly. That is yeah, when yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. But it's not going to come up with the idea of no parking signs. Exactly. Right. That's what I'm exactly. going to say. I mean, that's yeah. just one example I'm using, but it's a similar thing. Mm -hmm. Like, even Chintamani, Dali can't come up with the idea of Chintamani. Oh, no. It may generate this image, mm -hmm. but the ideation mm -hmm. is going to have to come oh, from, from a real life individual. Right. And do, would you say the same thing for editing also? Like, um, so for editing, we so we are already incorporating AI in our editing uh, work mm, in okay. weddings. So where it, it helps to uh, do the basic color correction, mm. we still need to have human editors do the final touch-ups. Mm. Okay. Uh, but the initial, it saves us time. It makes us our deliveries faster. Okay. So it allows us to put our efforts in the right direction. Right. Um, rather than working on something that's maybe no. fairly routine and mundane Not initially, no. you can put your efforts as an editor and working what's actually more difficult for the PC to mm. and actually important mm. as a as a human being to do. So that's something that's already incorporated that we're doing since the last uh, maybe years right now. So yeah. Right. Super. Yeah. Let's say if I'm coming to you as a customer or a client mm. for mm. a wedding photography requirement, mm. what are the touch points that you stress on mm. in that journey? Um, I would say, I mean, see, it's, uh, for us, it's obviously the initial point where you're coming to us and then you discuss your requirements. We showcase what we have and there's a confirmation of a contract. Mm. And there's, then there's the next part is where just, I think, suppose let us say you're getting married in December and you book us fairly early. Mm. We'll get back to nearly close to something. Hey, we're getting close to your wedding. Mm. So can you give us a little more details and so on. Right. And then of course the wedding day itself is right. the, the series of events leading up to the wedding day, mm. the wedding day. Right. And after that you have your delivery phases and things like that. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think that's it for me. Okay. <laughs> I mean, Antony, like even when you're giving out photo albums, people mm, mm. are very particular with the material mm, and the cover mm, and mm, all of that. Mm, mm. So do you, uh, like, do you, and you know, it's yeah, 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 yeah. So do you educate them on that part? Where yeah, of course, yeah. So we have uh, a swatch book in the office with all the cover options and albums. Right. Uh, where you can come and see and touch the mm. material suede, leather, linen, mm. whatever okay. you want. Hmm. All the various colors. Right. Um, so, I mean, of course, even on India, we do have a digital swatch book we'd send hmm. to people. Right. Um, and when you, but when you do video editing for clients, uh, we kind of discuss their audio languages preferences. Suppose you want Telugu or you want English, or we hmm. get a mood board of songs for them oh, right. that customizes their wedding film to them. Rather than just using the current trending hmm. song, we want to use songs that are going to resonate with that particular couple mm. over the long run because True. the wedding film is for life. Oh. Right. But today's trending song is only for today, right? Oh, so right. I think that's important to get their personal views mm -hmm. in terms of, again, you know, what language they want, what style they want. So that's also like a big kind of curation process mm. over there as well. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think the idea is to, again, customize that final output. Right. Because that's going to be an output for a lifetime or even more than a lifetime, oh, even yes. their kids or the next generation. Mm. So it's very paramount that we get that right input from them and we're able to give the output as per their uh, satisfaction. Mm. Interesting. Inka right. Mana? I think I'm good. Nagu, last uh, two questions I wanted to ask was, uh, how did you do this, like the moustache? <laughs> like, yeah, where did, that uh, was the first thing that <laughs> Yeah, Adi and also your watch. It looks okay. very interesting to me. So our ended I wanted to talk. Um, I think the facial hair came when I was in the UK, when I was young and I was like 
just experimenting with different facial uh-huh. hair styles uh-huh. uh, right uh, because i was able to grow a beard when most people weren't able to grow uh-huh. a beard right, uh-huh. right. so I, was, and I, i also had the freedom where not people not really judgmental over mm. there about what to do so i i did have a facial style and i think that was also kind of instrumental for me when i was quite recognizable on campus even mm. in the in the run up to the elections as well mm. right so mm. that time i had a facial style like uh, samuel jackson in pulp fiction mm. oh uh, yeah. we had this, and this. <laughs> oh, okay, crazy so i had nice. that for quite a while nice. oh nice um <laughs> and then obviously modified over time and all and then i kind of landed up on this and i think i, I think you've maintained this for, for a while my wife yeah. likes it now so i'm going to oh, stick with it so okay. i think nice. see I, i don't like see i don't look at myself you look at me mm. so what right. you like is important <laughs> what i like is important <laughs> <laughs> nice. True. So yeah. that's the uh, that's why I've said like I think it's quite it's uh, right not too difficult to maintain no yeah. intricate right. stuff right. to do so it's fairly good so I think I, I, and eventually I'm losing hair here but as long as this is there I'm happy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, so that's about the facial hair part. Um, I think the watches is something I bought in Japan last year. Okay. Um, it's the Casio Anna DG watch with the temperatures wall. So it's oh. uh, not Casio Citizen. Okay. Uh, it was something I was not I really wanted but I was not able to find in India. So when I saw it in Japan I'm like. Yes. Bye, right. yes. Oh yeah, so, last year you were in Japan, right? Yeah. Right, yeah. I think you did a photo series there as well. Correct. Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I've got one more series of Japan that I've yet to publish because of time. This is what I meant, right? This mm. I this is actually a series that I've really shot. Okay. I've not had the time to curate it to publish it. Okay. Mm. That's the barrier really. Right. <laughs> uh because when you ask about creative block just no, so right. came back yeah, to that. Yeah. Time is the block. Right. Got it. So I think uh that's it yeah yeah, yeah definitely yeah. a japan edition ka wale <laughs> we won't have a japan concord because photo stories from india i'll just put right. it on instagram or have an exhibition done right okay. right oh, there's a japan cultural center in, in delhi mm. i'm trying to get in touch with them to see if they'd be willing to do it because oh. it'll be related to them right but it's in delhi and delhi is far away and it's cold and it's hot oh. and i don't like the weather in delhi <laughs> probably we might yeah. do something with an experience sort of a thing for that particular yeah, edition yeah, yeah. yeah we can do that yeah yeah so all yeah. right thank you that, super thank you super guys thank you so thank much, you, thank you so much. Hope my pleasure we'll do this again yes for sure yeah. thank great chalo awesome thank yeah, you guys bye <laughs> bye bye